<laughs> yes, I, I feel so. Scott is um, he's at the dentist right now and um, having. I think he's getting the caps put on today, but um, yeah, it's it's serious. It's uh, it's real and it's serious. But I'm sure he, I know he would love to be here, but he's uh, under anesthesia. I had a similar situation a year ago where I put it off for too long, and then they find that one thing, and then all of a sudden they're just sticking around in there. And, right? Yeah. Right? Like, he's just like, oh, oh, <laughs> oh, no. Um, but thank God. Uh, yeah, we have we have a dentist and also um, we're able to pay for pay for it for the most part. So that's great. Yeah, that's not a certainly not in what either of you do for a living. Is that any kind of given? Yeah. Yeah. No, we're very, 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 very lucky. Lucky, 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 lucky ducks. Whose insurance are you under? Uh, we're under, well, because I'm in a union, we're under that one, uh, which is awesome. Is that SAG? SAG. And um, because it's, but it is, the sad thing, it is based on how much you earn. So that that is, uh, I'm, I'm sure that's problematic in some social justice way. So. But I'm grateful to have insurance for sure, as as anybody is. You feel bad because you're earning a certain amount. Well, it's like everybody deserves to have health care, so so it it shouldn't matter. Uh, shouldn't be based on whether you're a part time employee or full time or any of the things. I think that's uh, not doesn't seem good um, for, but. For all, for all in general, for just in terms of like, if if you want the world to be a pleasant place, don't you want everybody to be doing okay? Um, but um, yeah, I, yeah, I don't know what to do about the world. I was having a similar conversation with with somebody the other day, specifically. I write about technology as my main job. Mm -hmm. I, oh, I, work okay. at a, I work at a site called TechCrunch, and I okay. talk to a lot of uh, venture capitalists. Yes. And you try to have these conversations about, hey, you know, maybe everybody should be able to, at bare minimum, make a living making art. And it just doesn't, it just doesn't penetrate for a lot of people, I think. Or, yeah, or that everyone just, yeah, I don't know, because I'm a small business owner. Um, I have a S Corp. And, um, you know, I, tr I pay my employees, um, well, I have a bunch of 1099 employees and, uh, you know, they, I think the least I pay someone, um, which is our, a person who comes to as our housekeeper, I pay her $90 an hour. And I think, you know, like if I can pay, you know what I'm saying? Like, what's the deal with people not like McDonald's? Why can't they pay more than like, I don't understand that part of business where it's like, but if like this say, Oh no, we can't possibly afford. Um, and I, I, I guess I understand it for food service that the, the margins are really low. Um, but anyway, I don't understand business very well. So I'll just keep that to myself. I think the margins are really low because a lot of people are making, a lot more money than they probably should in, in other places right. in the company. It's probably a big right. part of it. Uh, yeah. When did you become a small business owner? Uh, 20. Let me see. Well, I think I, yeah, I got incorporated. I think around 2000 year 2000. So, so I guess 24 years ago or something. So that was like relatively early on for you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and I could be totally wrong about that. I'm not totally clear on the numbers. So it could be 2004. Okay, but ballpark, we'll say maybe around 20. It's one to 20 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How did you How did you end up doing... I mean, obviously, that's a, a pretty savvy decision as far as doing what you do for a living. Well, you go to the library and you get personal finance for dummies. And then you get how to start a small business in California. 
uh, by Nolo Press, which is a nonprofit uh, press that does business education literature. And you just take a whack at it. <laughs> so, so 2004, I mean, you had already, though, you had already been doing stand up for some time then. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And I, I, yeah, I mean, I don't think any life is not fair. I don't, I don't know why I, I've been able to do well. And uh, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a result of any sort of, uh, <laughs> personal strengths. I think it's just, uh, whim, arbitrary whim. I think we're complex beings and we can hold two ideas in our head at once. And I, and I think that you can both understand that there's a lot of luck that goes into all this stuff and timing, but mm-hmm. you know, surely at this point in your life, you must feel that there's something about you. There's some skill well, there. Well, and there's odds, you know, the longer you stay at something, I mean, it is, we were just talking about McDonald's. It's like McDonald's. Like you just go, I still know where they are in my neighborhood. They're at Woodbury and Lincoln. I don't, I've never been, but I know exactly what they are. I, where they are. I know what, exactly what's on, uh, I think their current menu. Are they, are they make, did they make fries into chicken fries where it's just chicken that looks like fries? It might have been Burger King. That's Margaret Kate Birking. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Maybe I don't know everything. Sure. Maybe I don't know everything. But you're like that familiar restaurant at the corner that people know. Yeah. Now. You just go, well, well, in a very tiny way, in a very obscure com- comedy way. Uh, yeah. It, yeah. I was just in a waiting room uh, to promote, uh, promote shows, whatever. And uh, on a show, and <laughs> yeah, I think people are surprised when they go, "Oh, I don't know who you are," and you're making a living, and um, that that is exactly what I'm doing. That there's, I'm, I'm have plenty of work, and yet um, I'm not known by, by I would say, majority of people. I, I would say most of the people who work are known by most people. So right, not right, that right, exactly. Yeah, that's no, great. Obviously, yeah. obviously, what you 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 do is different, but you also seem to be like constantly working on different things. Yes, that, and I love to. Yeah, that's that's the thing that I admire in other are, is just to keep going, is to keep going and keep making stuff, whether or not anyone cares. Um, but I do think that that does has made me a happier person or um yeah, I, I think it's just given my life some some shape and meaning and structure. So uh it, yeah, that's I, I like uh I, I like making new things. It gets complicated though. And this is something that I struggle with myself is, is how much, how much of the meaning that I find in life should I derive from the thing that I do for a living? Right. Well then, yeah, you, you gotta have hobbies, right? You gotta have, uh, friendships. I believe the New York Times said you have to have five close friends <laughs> in order to not die by the age of six. That seems like a, Anyways, uh, but I, yeah, yes, that is the rub because I think, yeah, I've definitely been, uh, you know, thought, oh, my value is attached to what I do. So I, I definitely still have problems with that. So, um, I'm trying, I'm trying to have other ways to think of myself as valuable. Sometimes, I've been sitting on my front bench and chit chatting with people and thinking, what if I, I just become really good at chit chat, at bl- bluster and going on? So you're launching a podcast. Well, it's like a podcast, but no one's being recorded. And hopefully I. <laughs> Hopefully I get other people. Not, not everyone have to, has to uh, plug something. 
How much of what oh, keeps? Oh, hold on. Okay. I just had a dog interruption. Oh, here. Hold on. Oh, oh, shoot. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, um, my husband has come home and he's not well. Um, but, uh, okay. Uh, should we pick this up later? Um, I think we're okay. Hold on. Hold on a second. Hold on. Okay. Okay. Sorry about that. I, uh, is, is he okay? Yes. Yeah. He's okay. He's just, uh, just a little, uh, I think numb. Sure. You could tell just by sight that something was not, was not right with him. Yeah. Yeah. Not well. So, um, but, uh, yes. So yeah. Chit chat. What, what do you enjoy doing? What do you have hobbies? I recently, I was talking, I'm a really terrible musician. Okay. Um, that's great. Really bad guitar player, but I, and, and this is such a like, I, I just did this, but this is such a pandemic thing. I bought a ukulele. Great. <laughs> I'm finding that it's, it's, it's scratching this part of my brain that I just haven't accessed in a long time. Right. That's lovely. I'm so glad that you're experiencing that. Um, yeah. That isn't that. So I think I'm going to start taking, there's this art cl- class place where I used to take classes. It was in a different part of town though. Um, and it was just an art class with kids and adults. And it was so delightful. So I think I'm going to do that this summer. Um, is, uh, take some art classes and enjoy myself. Um, yeah. Painting specifically? I don't know. You don't know. What was the, the last class you took? Was it largely painting? Uh, mostly I did pastels. I like the immediacy of a pastel and that my hands get all covered in chalk. There's lots of kids there. So you can, it's, it's called the wizard of art. So you can just grab a plastic figurine and then start, just start sketching, man. Start sketching. It's, it's, uh, it's nice because you just, there's not um, pressures off. Pressures off. See, I feel like I would be very excited about that at first because of how like clearly better I am than the children, and then there would be one one little asshole kid who is better than me, and then that would just completely ruin my confidence and my ability to do it. Oh, but the, the best stuff is the stuff that's like kind of a train wreck, where you're like, wow. I mean, I, I like it that I've tried over and over again. I did a, a triptych. No, not a triptych. I did my mother as the Mary Magdalene with holding two pugs. And it's got far too much. It's got layers of glitter that I poured on at some point and, you know, a muddiness that I now understand, um, is not good technique. <laughs> But, you know, it's a value to me. I, it made me think about my mother. Why Mary Magdalene? Because my mother, is a, she was a holy entity. Uh, she was a good person. I was reading an interview that the two of you did around this book. And, you know, there's a funny little aside about um, Scott doing stand-up. And, you, and, and I find it very relatable, that moment where you're like, oh, God, what if, what if he's better at this yes. thing that I've I've devoted my entire life life to to doing, and I wonder now you're getting into painting. Do you feel like there might be a little competition? Oh, no, and he knew that that I had taken some painting classes and stuff like that. But no, I hope not. Uh, I don't think so. Um, but yeah, that was hilarious. And what's so sad about that human like fear of it's like. Well, what if he was? What if he was fantastic? Like, wouldn't that be a great thing? Um, yeah, it would just be, uh, bizarre and wonderful. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I, I don't think he hasn't mentioned that. He seems to, uh, be pumped whenever I make something. In spite of that, cause like I certainly have a lot of 
anxiety and self-doubt around things, but are, are you able to at least sort of look at what you've been able to do over the years and like feel like you, you've accomplished something? Oh God. Yes. Yes. I, I'm very, yes, I am. All my dreams have come true. All my, I mean, everything I've ever more, 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 more than I ever thought was possible. Um, and then at the same time, I, I know that I have, uh, the, the fantasy that accomplishment gives you peace of mind or some, or helps your mental health, <laughs> I think is an illusion, uh, that I don't totally bought into where I thought, Oh, if I focus on this accomplishment, then I'll feel, I'll feel better. Um, and, uh, and that, Although, you know, there has been a little bit of that and it's hard to, it's hard to tell that to somebody. I, mean, I remember when somebody would tell me, you know, who had money said, Oh, well, when you have money, you'll realize it doesn't I mean, it make some difference, you know, for food and shelter. That's awesome. Healthcare, but it, you're still going to feel, you're still going to be yourself. So you're going to be worried about something. And I remember just thinking about them, just like you are a monster and you don't know what you're talking about. Um, so apologies to all that think, I think this sounds monstrous, but, um, yeah, I'm still the same person. So, uh, even though I, yeah, I'm very proud of myself, very amazed, grateful, um, delighted at the same time, I, I, uh, I still have issues and, and that's okay. Like, I think that's something I could turn my brain around to go like, you should feel good all the time. <laughs> you know, you should be happy and ecstatic. But we're not supposed to, right? As humans. Yeah. Well, some people are. Some people genuinely are very like high. Uh, yeah. Just, I have a dear friend who's just always at a very good level. Like, and she's a delight to be around. She is so fun to be around. Um, and, and yeah, and it's okay, you know, for whatever reason, uh, that's not my, that's not my strong suit. Um, but, but I am a comfort to be around if you feel bad because me too. <laughs> <laughs> you don't feel like you you cause people to spiral with your own issues. I I don't think so, but well, and I you'd have to talk to for example my husband or my friends. Um because I'm sure they would have a different point of view. Uh, uh yeah. Cuz I think that is exhausting if you're close to somebody who has any sort of health problem, mental or physical, or otherwise it's exhausting. It's like just like you still is it still with the the thing? Um, so yeah, it's tiresome. Um, uh, but everybody's tiresome in their own special way. <laughs> Personally, I think it's overstated, but this notion of you know of making art. People talk about this a lot with like songwriters about being like a form of therapy. Is that something that you buy into? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, to work something out through writing about it or creating about it, I think, yeah, that's free. Number one, it's free. <laughs> and, uh, and it's the effect of a support group where you, then you express it, share it with people and people respond and you can co totally know that you're not alone. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, totally. I think it is genuinely, oh, I love an open mic. Open mic, uh, that is a very healing space. Some people don't like them. Like they find them. I was so They're excited. awkward. They, they were they can be. Yeah, I was like, well, I don't know. Yeah, I, I really enjoy them. Uh, just because it is so democratic and everybody goes up and there's not any, there's no barrier to being in it beyond somebody putting your name in the bucket. Interesting you bring up open mic specifically. Are are you do you feel like you're going up and doing these sorts of things and yes. kind of in uh, your unloading? 
Yeah, I go. I, well, there's an open mic in my neighborhood. I try to go on every Monday. Um, and there's some, because I'm old, I, I have a feeling. I realize they put me up, even though I put my name in the bucket. I think they put me up earlier, knowing that I'm. You got to get to bed early. Yeah. yeah they, it's so I'm a little bit worried about that, that they're giving me special treatment. I know they're giving me special treatment. So that's. That's different from most open rights where you've got to stay. you got to stay till the end. You're also, as we established at the beginning of the conversation, a famous comedian. Well, also, isn't that, isn't that the reason I should stay to the end? Right? And that I get everything so easy to me, like a little... A Fabergé egg on a, on well, a surely that's pillow? partially why they're... It's, it can't all be age-based. If surely they're prioritizing well, you for that reason. Well... It's very, anyways, it's, it, it, it's lovely. And I love, uh, yeah, I, uh, do a, I'm doing a show tonight that's more of a booked show, but I, I, I like the democracy of, a of an open mic where, but, but all the, even though I'm not getting democracy because I am getting put up earlier. So let me just say, huh, interesting. Uh, I have benefited from my own, uh, prestige and um i better you know what i think i'm going to make a commit to you for the next open mic i do i'm going up last i'm closing the show you could go first and last oh, that might be too great much. idea i did host an open mic in my neighborhood um i want to say like four times but it was so because it's los angeles open mics are so long like 70 people, 70 people will, will sign up and, uh, it became overwhelming. And also the thing about Los Angeles, which is that people will say, uh, they'll want to switch their place. So they'll go, Hey, um, I'm number 17, but I got this spot at, um, the Hogshead Winery over in West Hollywood at 745. So can I go up third and switch with Brian? Who's with, uh, Siwa and Siwa is going to go up at, you know, like we're at a weird open mic and no one's here. <laughs> What's going on? You can go on in the bathroom. Like there, anyways, it just makes me laugh. Just the, the, um, the machinations of, of us all, including myself. It's just now occurring to me, you know, we were talking about Scott doing stand-up and it, it and it's occurring to me that he decided to do stand-up when you weren't present yes yes which i think was a fantastic idea because I, I i for sure I, I think that would be i would be a little anxious about drawing in front of him i think just because just because you're self-conscious you know and he just wanted to see what it was like and he totally did and and did it a number of times and he's great he's really funny He's very, and has a really, um, I mean, as everyone does, but because he's my beloved, he has an insanely unique way of thinking. He once memorized a whole basketball, uh, sports column and then recited that aloud as, as his act for about three minutes. It was so fucking funny. And, uh, yeah, just a banal, um, basketball game described on stage yeah <laughs> was a little bit of anti-comedy perhaps <laughs> oh it really it was really good so um yeah he's wonderful this is this is such a key part of the book that we're ostensibly here to talk about that the two of you did together is i finding the the difficulties of finding that person in your life with that sort of compatible weirdness. Yes. Yeah. And also somebody who's down, like that's mm. the one thing like Scott and I, I think we we're both old, old enough or I don't know, whatever the miracle was of like both of us being at the place, the same place and the same time to go, let's do this. Like we are both willing to put in the effort um, because I, I just hadn't ever done that before with anyone. Or I also, 
yeah, I kind of ascribe to the whole thing of like, oh, it, it, yeah, I've, I'd fallen in love many times before, but often based on fantasy where it's like I didn't really know who the person was or, um, yeah, so this, the great thing that I really fell in love with that we had in common was that Scott was like, I think we can make this work. <laughs> you know, let's go to therapy. Let's go to a weird couples weekend. Let's do all the things. And, and, and that said, I don't want to have the hubris of saying, Oh, we know what we're doing and we figured it all out. Cause that, that is not true at all in any way. Um, at all. Um, but, uh, that, that has been really special to me to find somebody who, uh, yeah, had as, was as interested in, in, um, in making a creative, beautiful life together as, as I, I was. You touched on something interesting there, and, and this is in the book as well. And I, I don't know if I've ever heard anybody really contextualize it in this way that it, there, there's almost this just, pragmatic decision of like, all right, starting now, we're going to do what we can to make this thing work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause I think, uh, and I don't know, just cause I, I hadn't had any success the other way, which is the way my, my parents did, which was sort of like, Oh, you just know, you know, this is your person. And I was like, huh. And I've always been a very frightened, um, anxious person. Like, I don't know that I'm the bright person. Like I'm always on the fence about me. Like much Yeah, less. what was it? Red flag factory? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like how the heck am I going to think that someone else is going to be safe or um yeah, and and anyone who I, I had had a number of people who whatever um you know, I fell in love with or whatever who rejected me because I didn't seem safe, you know, because of uh, mental health issues, et cetera. And um, so, yeah. And that was a wonderful. Thing. Scott was just like, yeah, my mom was mentally ill. That's okay. No big deal. You know, I'll, I'll drive you to the psych ward if you need it. Um, and I've had some rough times with depression even recently. Cause I, I'm just going through menopause, which can cause your mood to dip. And he's like, do you need to go? Do you, you know, like, what do you need to do? Do we need to go, um, uh, you know, take some lithium and <laughs> power down for a while? Um, and that, yeah. And that just the knowledge that a, a huge thing that has been problematic in my life is, is okay. Um, and I, I, I don't know what he would say, but m maybe he has something where it's like, you just feel like, oh, this thing that's been a problem for so many people is not a problem at all. There are other th <laughs> there are other things that are problematic. Like sure, this isn't the, this isn't the top of the list of the things that are problems right now. Yeah, I, I think a big part of it, and and this is something that I went through during the pandemic, and probably a lot of other people did, was like really hitting that wall where I like I finally, after dragging my free feet, did therapy and got my um my ocd diagnosis of you know it sounds like so much of your adult life has been this journey of like figuring out exactly what's going on with you and that's a big part i think of being able to connect with somebody is once you have like a better idea of what it is that's going on then you could no yeah yeah i mean and i mean it's nice to have a name for it but then and it's like and then it's just the day to day like yeah, you just got to keep going. You just got to keep going because, like, oh, I have a name for it. Well, what do I do? Wear a hat that says that. Sure, on it? you have a name <laughs> for it, but also, you know, with your partner, it, you know, you can be like, hey, here's here's some things that you should probably know, and then we can get through this together. Yeah, yeah, and that it's not, um, yeah, that it that it's definitely not personal. Like, because I, I know, you know, I get super irritable. I get, um, you know, problems sleeping. I, um, then I'll get whipped up and get like a real great idea, um, 
I was getting very excited with spring coming. I was like, you know, having a whole lot of, um, what was my, I, yeah, I was just like trying to say hi to every single person I met. Scott's like, wow. All right. (laughs) Like, hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Hi, how are you? Which great idea. In theory, um, but you know, take exhausting. it down a notch. Exhausting. Yeah. So, I th- yeah, it's like somebody who, uh, yeah. And there are other things. I mean, I think everybody is odd in their own special way, even if their oddness is that they aren't odd at all. Like that, I think is so strange. <laughs> Those are the most suspicious people for sure. We have a neighbor who is so normal. Like she is just like, what did we tell her? We we told her something yesterday that we had, we had a a dog, a dog park party at our house where we had 17 dogs over the house. And there are so many dogs and it was really wonderful. All these dogs, you know, dogs of course peed in the corner. And then one dog was drinking from the toilet. It was kind of like a big, it was like a drunk party, but no one was. Yeah. It was was like a frat, frat dog, like a frat party, frat dog party. Our neighbor just looks so horrified. And then, and she'll often say things like, I know this is weird. And then she'll say something that is so like, you put chocolate chips in it. That's the end of the story. Like, like, (laughs) just like this, it's, or does it, it doesn't seem um, that odd. Um, So, but maybe that is her oddness. Is that she is so normal? To me, you know, it's kind of off-putting to hear that she was freaked out by the idea of a lot of dogs. Yeah. Oh, here he is. Oh my gosh, it's a special viewing of Mr. Scott Marvel Cassidy. He's here. He's he's had a, a little bit of um he's here. He's had some work done. He's had some work done. I just had two hours of dental work. Done. He said two hours of dental work. Two hours of dental work. I was telling Maria at the beginning of the conversation that I've never had somebody who so didn't want to talk to me that they scheduled two root canal <laughs> surgeries. Oh, yeah. I, I, of did, I did not want to go. Yeah. I did not want to go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. you look okay. You sound all right. Uh, it's all numb. They just put temporary crowns in, so I can eat mush for the next two weeks. Yeah, but it's all good. Well, we've been talking about the book, Hog Book and Laser Eyes. Well, we wrote it in 20... <laughs> that was Sorry. it? That's all I'm getting out of you? That's it, no. Um <laughs> His, we're, we're not an OnlyFans. Um, <laughs> no, no, no. I no. I, I meant the book story, not the. Oh, the book Whoa. story. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. No. I, I, oh, okay. book story. No, that's that. Scott has. Uh, yeah, I was. I mean, I was. Not, you've heard me say, but I can say it again. How much I appreciated that you really accepted my mental mental health issues and that it was okay that I was who I was. And you can grow a beard if you want. And I can grow a beard if I want sometimes. And and that, you know, that that might be an ongoing thing. It wasn't like, oh, you got on the right meds. and It is an ongoing thing. It is. I know. I was just telling him, I said, you know, I wasn't feeling good and said, hey, do you need to go to the hospital? And uh, not yet, but who knows? But I got issues. Yeah, got, Scott's got issues. I didn't want to speak on your behalf, but, <laughs> but Scott's got his own uh semi submerged obelisk in the sea. <laughs> How were the last four years? I mean, in terms of just kind of coping with everything. What's with the last why last oh, four years? For, uh, I think of pandemic. The oh, because of the COVID. Pandemic. Oh. <laughs> we were talking about the importance of like of chit chat earlier. And obviously, you know, that kind of limits your ability to be social and, and interact with other people. Well, yeah. I was just telling my dentist that um because he was talking about me being a painter. And I, I, I feel ashamed saying this, but I really enjoyed it, not having to go out and paint, being able to work and not having any appointments or any social activities. Scott, I talked to so many cartoonists and I've heard that dozens of times. So I don't, don't okay, feel too good. bad about that. 
All right, good. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's oh, that's hilarious. Yeah, I didn't mind it either. Like, I love doing Zoom shows every day. I was like, but um, she had one of her biggest crowds on she a had Zoom one show. One of my biggest crowds on a Zoom show. Um, but uh, also, my mom was uh, in the process of dying at that time, and I got to be with her the whole time. Um, kind of as a result of having all the free time in the world, and um. And so that was a real fantastic gift because I had it, had it not, my mom was even like, my mom was very much, uh, she liked a shiny object. So if ever I had the chance to work, she'd be like, honey, go work. Oh my God, you're going to meet Meredith Vieira. <laughs> like, <laughs> and so I know she had no excuse. She had to be around me for her la- the ra- last uh, six months of her life. That's another thing I get to a lot, specifically from um, touring musicians with kids that they just, you know, you've got to go out there and you've got to do your job. And that does what it does to, you know, your social and personal life. And this was finally an opportunity. You know, you were forced. You were, you were in a sense, forced yeah. to be with your family. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. And um, yeah. And, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, of course, you know, I, I think, I don't know if I'm, sometimes he's more social, sometimes I'm more social, but I do, I do love people. I love having people around and like we go to the dog park, go to the coffee shop, go to the gym. When I can force myself to go to the gym, I, I definitely need people. Uh, um, yeah, that, that, is wonderful face-to-face uh, communication. I, I think a big part of me figuring myself out over the last, you know, several years has been like, f- figuring out what it means to be introverted mm-hmm. and kind of reconciling the fact that I can, you know, like talk to strangers on a podcast or go on a stage. But if I'm at a party where there's not 14 dogs and just a lot of people standing around, uh, I'm, I'm going to be the guy in the, the corner the entire time. And that's something that like, I can never really, you know, f- figure out about myself until fairly recently. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I like parties where I'm the host. I'm okay being the host. Cause then where, where you know, everybody. Well, yeah. And you also, you have shit to do. Cause then it's like, you go, Oh, I can let me help you. Or let me put this over here or let me wander into a corner of my house where I know no one will be. Um, well, <laughs> Oh, and the book sold out. It sold out, and they just restocked it yesterday on um, on Fant- Fantagraphic. So, so that's exciting, and and yeah, just be we're delighted. Being on Fantagraphics is an absolute dream to come true. Yeah. It's insane because yeah. I just I've been publishing my own comics since I was twenty. You know, just Xeroxes. You know, maybe ten people would see it. And then um, we also are in uh, two recent Mad magazines. Yeah, yeah, we did, uh, or Scott did. We 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 did a uh, spread for Mad magazine, um, and the the premise of it was stink lines through art history that often um, fart lines were were removed from famous work, famous pieces of art like um, <laughs> Soros. Uh, in the park or, um, you know, uh, the Sphinx, the Sphinx, the Sphinx had a giant stone. So uh, they asked us for 10 ideas <laughs> and the stink lines was one of the lesser, good, <laughs> lesser ones. And that's the one they wanted. I was like, no. <laughs> what were your top ones? What was rejected? Well, I, can't I can't remember because we were just so shocked. Uh, I think there were more erudite and, and, they're more erudite than famous farting paintings. <laughs> but the, the secret, it worked out because, like, the, then we talked about how, um, at, at the end, just how art can stink because it's not representative of, not um, inclusive, uh, inclusive yeah. of all people who are doing art. And, uh, um, yeah, so it, it was awesome. And, and but then way. some people were upset. I just want it to be funny. Oh, no. Well. <laughs> I have IBS. I have a hidden disability, and I, I feel like I have not necessarily <laughs> been represented through art and history. So I, I appreciate that representation. Awesome, awesome. Nice. Oh, my friend. I have a friend who has IBS, 
I feel you. It's rough. Every time I talk to her, she's always like, I think I'm just going to start eating grape jello. That's all I want. Just grape jello. I don't think that's going to be good for your intestines. <laughs> no, I know. I know. But it's like, I think after a certain point, you just kind of give up. Like in terms of, anyways, she's just been through a lot. She's been through a lot. I'm trying do to do you find that relatable, Scott, of uh, not eating solid foods? Oh, right now, especially. Yeah. I've been eating applesauce. I just had rice and some kind of gravy. Yeah. But actually, I'm losing weight, so I'm kind of psyched. Your teeth look great, by the way. Thanks. Nice. It's the back teeth that are in bad Yeah, yeah. Shape. It always is the back, back yeah, teeth. Yeah. I grind my teeth, so. The rabbit is in the background. Oh. Rabbit. What is that, a little cave? It's got a little uh, castle. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, what's your name? That's Juniper. 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 Well, does it, here, you want to see Matt? I do. <laughs> I don't know if we can see him. Yeah, yeah, I can. He's he's not okay. doing a lot, but yeah. He's not doing a lot, but he's he's handsome. He's handsome as all get out. <laughs>